Your period is your fifth vital sign. Do you know how to track it and listen to it more than just tracking on your app? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified REI and OBGYN. I'm a fertility doctor and I help women learn about their health, hormones, and their fertility. But your period matters regardless if you want to be pregnant now, maybe in the future, or maybe you're done having kids. It's actually a vital sign that can give you a lot of information about your body if you know what you're looking for. But actually what I find most of the time is that women don't track their cycles beyond marking it on an app, and apps can be incorrect in the vast majority of women. And the true data you really want to know isn't going to come from just a tracking app. You actually need to learn how to listen to your body. Before we dive in quickly, thank you for being here. Subscribe, like, share this with friends, and ask questions in the comments so that we can see what you want and I can answer your questions. This information I'm going to cover is also covered in my new book, The Fertility Formula, in much more detail. And I have pre-order bonuses. If you're interested in ordering, please go to nataliecrawfordmd.com slash book. So when we talk about your menstrual cycle, this is the number one way to tell if your hormones are normal. So if you've ever asked the question, are my hormones balanced? Meaning, are my hormones okay? I actually say your hormones can be balanced, but to me, this means that they are properly communicating. So your brain is talking to the rest of your body. It's interpreting signals appropriately and responding okay. And this balance is going to change throughout the day because your hormones are a dynamic system meant to interpret and respond. This means there's not one single lab test. I can just say, hey, here's a panel of labs, go get them checked, and I can tell your hormones are normal. What's much more important is actually learning to listen to the clues your body is giving you and knowing what's normal and abnormal so we can act on those clues. And that is what so many women are not taught and we do not talk about. So let's talk about your menstrual cycle, what is actually happening, because that's going to be the key to telling you how to actually track it and leverage your cycle as a vital sign, regardless of the life stage that you are in. Before I do this, I have to say, if you're on hormonal contraception, you're not really having a true period. You might be having bleeding, which is a hormone withdrawal bleed, and this is good, this is fine, but you're not able to use your period as a vital sign. And this always begs the question, should you stop hormonal contraception to get this answer? I think that this is going to be a very personal decision, and there's no perfect contraceptive option. I'll admit, the pill, the IUD, Everything has its limitations, but I want what you are going to be able to feel confident preventing pregnancy if you do want to prevent a pregnancy. And knowing this information about your cycle later is going to be even more important when you do stop contraception. I recommend everybody stops at least three to six months before you want to get pregnant so you can learn to track your cycle. And if you have an abnormal cycle, go see the doctor right away. That's really a hallmark of all of this. Abnormal cycles are not normal. And so if you realize through listening to this that you do have an abnormal cycle, you should go get evaluated and be a little bit of a squeaky wheel if you need to so that you can get to answers about what is actually happening inside your body. We care about your irregular cycles. It's not just important only if you want to get pregnant. Anytime in your life, it's important. I can't tell you how often patients will say, oh, I didn't have a period very often, but who likes a period? So it wasn't a big deal. And I cringe inside because it's actually a big deal. All those years you might've gone without estrogen can be really detrimental to your long-term health. So every month, I want you to think about inside your ovaries, a vault where all your eggs are kept and you're born with all your eggs and you run out of them over time. Eventually the vault will be empty and you'll be in menopause. Every single month, you're going to have a group of eggs coming out of this vault. Each egg grows inside a follicle, which is a small fluid-filled structure. The brain is going to send out FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormone, which will stimulate a follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it makes estrogen. And this estrogen actually stops your bleeding because it grows the endometrial lining, and it talks back to the brain. And the brain is then saying, hey... Once I see a high enough estrogen level, and this is a very specific number of 200 picograms for 50 hours, so very specific, then the brain's going to say, oh my gosh, we must have a mature egg. I'm going to send out a surge of a different hormone called LH. LH is luteinizing hormone, fancy name, but what it does is it has the follicle that got bigger as the egg got more mature. It now is going to rupture. This little cyst called the follicle is going to rupture. The egg is going to be released and the follicle is going to reform. And that's ovulation. This follicle is then going to make progesterone at pulses stimulated from LH pulses from the brain. So progesterone goes up and down the entire luteal phase. 
first half of the cycle is called the follicular phase when a follicle is growing estrogen dominant. Second half is called the luteal phase. This is when you have both estrogen and progesterone. You have a corpus luteum. While that luteal phase can only last for typically about two weeks, the corpus luteum can't survive any longer unless you get pregnant. So then that corpus luteum is going to die. Progesterone will drop you'll get a period and the process will start over. So the mistake that so many people make is that they're just marking their cycle day one on an app and they're saying it's coming, so all is good. Yes, your period should be regular and predictable, which means if I give you a calendar, you should be able to look at it and point to the next day of your period and with one to two days of accuracy, be correct. It shouldn't be what I call irregularly regular, which means it comes, but I can't really predict the day. That's actually your hormones are not in as good of balance as they should be if that is what's happening. But even more than that, when we want you to think about the stages of here's my perfect normal ovulation, my period is very predictable, my luteal phase is, is great, everything's a rock star. There's stages of ovulatory dysfunction as things get progressively worse, and abnormalities can fall anywhere along this stage. So the first stage is actually going to be abnormalities of the luteal phase. So you are still ovulating, but that corpus luteum doesn't have what it takes to last the full two weeks. And so if your luteal phase is less than 11 days, or you have spotting in the luteal phase, this is concerning. And I want you to think about the fact that a lot of people might come and throw progesterone onto this. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm also saying that's not the root cause. Because if you're not making enough progesterone, it's because you're not ovulating a good enough follicle. It's an ovulation problem. Progesterone may be part of the treatment, but somebody who says, I check a progesterone, if it's less than 10, I treat with progesterone. They don't know what's really happening here because that's not getting to the root cause. They're just slapping a Band-Aid on. So if your luteal phase is short, that's the first stage of ovulatory dysfunction. This can happen most commonly. This can happen with thyroid abnormalities, prolactin abnormalities, or what I call hypothalamic dysfunction. Anything that's coming into the brain and interfering with it, so the brain is not sending out those perfect signals. And this can be inflammation, stress, illness, autoimmune disease, insulin resistance. A bunch of those different factors are actually causing static interference at the brain and could cause a little bit of this dysfunction. And then let's say we lose weight, we drop in inflammation, or we were over-exercising and now we cut that down and build muscle. Now the brain's able to sense what's happening a little bit better. So hypothalamic dysfunction is the hypothalamus is what's interpreting all these signals. Something's not working appropriately. Then we start to get into the next stage, which is actually can be shortening of your follicular phase or lengthening of your follicular phase. We'll just say abnormalities in the follicular phase. And this can come from either having too few eggs in the vault, so diminished ovarian reserve or perimenopause, having too many eggs like PCOS, that hypothalamic dysfunction getting worse, or the thyroid or prolactin getting worse. So now your periods might be either getting shorter or spacing out a little. Then we start to get to that true irregularity where you're skipping cycles, and then we're getting to what we call amenorrhea or absence of a period. And going through these, you know, amenorrhea, absence of a period, it could be the ovaries not responding, you're an ovarian failure, premature ovarian failure, menopause. It could be hypothalamic amenorrhea. The brain is not sending out FSH or LH. That could be from a brain mass, but also could be from calorie deficiency, severe over-exercising, high levels of stress. That can also cause hypothalamic amenorrhea. Severe PCOS can cause you to not have periods, to have them be very spaced out. So these are different things that can all be going on. And yes, if you're not having periods, you might be more aware of it. But these more subtle changes when it comes to the luteal phase or a shortening or lengthening of your follicular phase, you're not going to know that unless you know when you ovulate. So you know how long is your follicular phase and how long is your luteal phase. So how are you going to do that? We'll say there are some great options now with apps that include wearable. Wearables. wearables are using a BBT, basal body temperature, to track your body. Basal body temperature is when after you've ovulated, progesterone is now going to be made and progesterone raises your core body temperature by at least 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you see an increase in temperature, that is confirming that you ovulated. And that can be a little bit tough to predict if you're just tracking your cycles, although I do have full videos on it. But some of these apps have an algorithm that uses the BBT with that data and can tell you when you ovulated so you can detect those cycle links. 
Another way that I like a lot is your cervical mucus. As estrogen is getting to that peak stage, it is actually going to change the cervical mucus, which is the barrier to your uterus. So cervical mucus is now going to change. It's going to be sticky, stretchy, egg white. And this is to allow sperm to pass through physiologically. But when you see type four cervical mucus, that white and suddenly it looks like an egg white and it's stretchy and sticky, that is your ovulation day. And now you can look at these two stages of your cycle and see if they seem normal or abnormal. And the other option is to check your ovulation with an OPK or an ovulation predictor kit. Using an OPK is going to check the LH surge from the brain. Ovulation is considered the day after this happens. This is a urinary-based kit, and there's other urinary-based hormone assessments that do a similar thing and check more hormones and are more expensive. I'm not saying one's right or wrong. They're giving you the same data. It just depends on how much you want to spend or what data you exactly want. These tests are going to let you know what is happening in each phase of your cycle. And of course, anything that's changed from what should be normal for you always needs to be evaluated. But this means you have to know normal so that you can understand using your cycle as a vital sign in order to get more information about your body. Okay, I know this episode is going to cause some questions, so ask them below so I can answer all of your questions for you. Thank you, friends. Don't forget to check out the fertility formula at nataliecrawfordmd.com slash book and also the As A Woman podcast, which has a lot of great episodes right here on YouTube as well. Thanks, friends.